Welcome, brothers. In today's video, we're going to talk about marriage, divorce, and the ex-wife who wants to make your life impossible. But before we continue, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment. Brothers, we're now on TikTok, so feel free to check us out there. Without further ado, let's get started. Can we normalize wanting to break up with your partner in a long-term relationship? Roko's obviously bae. We've been together for over six years. Look at those little babies. Which means we've been through a lot of ups and downs. And we actually had a point about two years in where we were going through this really rocky period that I did not know if we were going to make it through. And one of my good friends is a marriage and family therapist, and she introduced me to this concept of the five st relationship stages that every couple goes through. And let me tell you, it changed my perspective on relationships. So first we've got the honeymoon phase. This usually lasts about the first six months and this shit is euphoric. Like literally your brain releases a chemical compound with dopamine and oxytocin and endorphins and makes you feel euphoria. It's addicting. This unfortunately can also make it easy to overlook red flags in a partner. Between about six months to that two year mark, we move on to the differences phase, which is where some of that euphoria starts to wear off. Conflict starts to emerge. You start to see your partner as a real person and people have flaws. And it's tempting at this point to withdraw or fight about things. The third stage, the struggle, is really where I think Roko and I ran into issues. This happens at about the two year relationship mark. This is where deeper seated issues and incompatibilities arise. And it's centered around this idea of like the partnership starting to pull apart, partners becoming resentful of each other for taking away their individuality and wanting to invest more time outside of the partnership rather than into it. And this is a common breakup point for couples, but you can get through it with communication, with intentional conflict resolution and with like really intentionally showing affection. And then comes the repair stage. This usually evolves between that two to five year mark and is the decision point that couples have to come to after going through all that struggle. You know, they probably feel drained and resentful about the relationship and need to commit to each other. If they want to continue onwards, they both have to put in the effort to grow individually and grow together. And my favorite stage is enduring love. This commonly kicks in at about five years. I mean, it's really kind of marks the breakthrough of the repair stage. At this point, you've really chosen each other. You've grown together, you've learned how to communicate and you get this really strong sense of support from your partner to support you in your individuality. You almost, in a way, re-enter the honeymoon phase, you start to play together again, and it really feels like falling in love again. Do you know why women support no-fault divorce so much? It's because many live for the excitement, thinking they'll be in a relationship with a man, and everything will be like a Disney movie, happily ever after. But life isn't a silly narrative where they'll live happily ever after. What many women do is, feeling that there's no more love, they ask for a divorce. That's why 80% of divorces are initiated by women because many, in search of excitement, leave the man who truly loved them. Others do it when this man is facing financial difficulties, and some do it when they want to sleep with another man. But to save face, they accuse their husband of being abusive, claiming they left their abusive husband. The irony is that you see so many women nowadays going to therapy, and never in that process do they learn how to be a good wife. What ends up happening is the relationship breaking apart. We all know people who have been married for over 20 years, and the first thing they say is, it hasn't been easy, but we learn to overcome challenges in our relationship. But with a modern woman, if a marriage lasts for five years, you can consider yourself lucky because nowadays, 50% don't make it past two years. A woman shared her regrets about not working harder to save her marriage now that her ex-husband is happily remarried. The 41-year-old woman shared to the True Off My Chest subreddit that she left her husband around 10 years ago, shortly after they'd had their first child together. According to this woman, there were no major issues in the marriage. She was a stay-at-home mom and had her husband wrapped around her finger. He did whatever she said and she burned him out. When he grew tired of her demands, she started threatening divorce. She thought she was still a great catch and that she could do better than her husband, so she left. She ended up getting joint custody of her son and the house after the divorce. Now, 10 years later, the ex-husband is happily remarried with a baby daughter and a new house. The divorced woman, on the other hand, has been unmarried ever since. She's jealous of her ex-husband's new wife, saying, she took my husband, she took my kid, she took my life that was once mine, 
and now I live in an empty house. She claims she is alone and miserable and wishes she would have been a better wife 10 years ago so she wouldn't be in this situation. As you can probably imagine, not many people were very sympathetic towards this woman. You got what you deserved and he got what he deserved, one Redditor commented. Others noted that the new wife didn't take anything from her with one saying, you gave it away. This woman's story may end in bitterness and guilt, but that's not the case for most divorcees. According to research derived from family law attorneys, 80% of divorcees end up remarrying Married. While divorce is a valid option in many situations, it's not always the solution. It takes two to make things work, and many people believe this woman reaped what she sowed. Brothers, on this channel, we create many videos each month discussing various topics related to women. However, every time we watch a video of a woman getting divorced and sharing her story, she always says, my ex-husband was abusive. Why is it that all men are always portrayed as the abuser, in short, the villain? We've made many videos, and this is the common factor. But karma is so good that you can notice that all these men labeled as abusers end up rebuilding their lives with another woman in most cases, and they live happily. The women who leave the so-called abuser end up alone and bitter, as is the case with this woman. So, if he was so bad, why does another woman love him? Want to marry him? That would be the million-dollar question. Another thing to note is how selfish women can be. When a woman leaves a man, she wants to see him ruined and unhappy, in other words, to see him suffer. She takes his child, his house, half of his money, who knows what else. Despite all this, the man still rises from the ashes because he's likely between 30 to 45 years old, the prime of a man's life. He finds another woman who truly loves him. His ex-wife didn't achieve her goal of seeing him ruined. Now you see him happy, with a new home, a new wife, a new child. Even her child wants to be with his dad. This gives us a signal that the woman is a bitter, unbearable witch who was probably the real abuser. But watch the next video that will leave you shocked about what a divorce can do to a man. Curious why y'all are saying no to marriage. You seem like a lovely young lady, so I'm going to try and explain it to you. Men stand everything to lose in a divorce. All it takes is a few false allegations or anything like that. And the family court system is sealed for a reason. It is a court of equity. It is not a court of justice. And I wish more men knew that. A court of equity means there's no one there to hold the judge accountable for the things he says and or does in the family court. It's a total racket. I've been to judicial systems in third world countries and I thought, wow, this is horrible. And then I went to the family court and my circuit court and I saw exactly the same trash. There's another aspect to it beyond a complete lack of judicial accountability, and that is the expectation in many states for the ex-spouse to be maintained for life. Now, 90 plus percent of the time, that's gonna be the man paying the woman. Um, that is a lifelong bill. Can you imagine if you were to sell your car decide you don't want your car anymore, so you sell it, and then someone in a position of authority within the government telling you, well, you made an original commitment to purchase that car, you're gonna pay the maintenance on it until the day you die. Can you imagine that? That's why men aren't getting married. Here's the other thing. All of my generation that went through that, I call it house fire because I freaking lost everything just to get the hell out of there because it was toxic and bad. All of my generation is informing this younger generation, probably the folks about your age, about the dangers of divorce, and we're sharing our trauma stories. Type divorce in the search bar of TikTok, you'll see all the women celebrating. They got all this stuff because they stripped that man of everything he had, they bled him dry. You look at all the men who post divorce videos and it is, holy crap, I just lost everything. So that's why men don't want to get married anymore. Let me know if you have any questions. Brothers, this man spoke with complete truth. The reality is that in 90% of divorces, the woman comes out on top. For a man to come out ahead, he has to find a lawyer who can create an extremely good plan because, as a man, you face an uphill battle in the courts. Just her accusing you of abuse is enough to get you arrested without an investigation. Do you know why I applaud a man who bounces back after a divorce? Because it's tough. It's a battle to get back on your feet. Alimony, half of your money, your house, many men nowadays have no family or support whatsoever. They have to rely solely on their efforts, 
sometimes ending up sleeping on friends' sofas when they don't have brothers or a father to support them. You know how tough that is. That's why a man who rises again is a fighter, a man who has to overcome a hell imposed by the state. The tough part is seeing that same woman who promised to love you bring another man into your house, living off what you've built. Then she wonders why men don't want to get married. It's like escaping a burning house, leaving with just the clothes on your back, sometimes accused of being an abuser with your personal image tarnished. That's why when I see a simp who gets married without a prenup, I just say he's walking into the lion's den without life insurance. Brothers, be mindful when signing that contract with the devil because you might come out of it alive, but not without getting burned. <laughs> a few days ago when I wasn't home, my husband managed to get on my iPad and look through all of my text messages. So he now knows that I am planning on moving out as soon as I can secure a place. So for the last two days, he has spent almost all of his time meeting up with mutual friends in an attempt to secure their alliance in this situation. And that is so very frustrating. Um, he literally took today off of work to like scurry around town meeting up with people. I have realized, however, that if these mutual friends either don't care about or don't see all of the manipulation, lies, and control that have been going on for years, I guess they don't want to be friends with them anyway. In short, I wanted to ruin my husband, see him suffer, surprise him with a divorce while my lawyer prepared everything to screw him over. I would tell all our friends that he was an abuser, that I was going through hell, so I could emerge as the victim and make my husband look like the villain. That was the plan, brothers. That's why a man should never, and I mean never, distance himself from his friends or neglect those connections. A man should always maintain his connections because, in a divorce, the support of your friends is crucial especially when the woman tries to tarnish your image as a man. That's why those Friday nights out at the bar or grill with your friends are always necessary. Canceling them as a man will only lead to dependence on the woman. Look at the entire plan she had. Fortunately, the man realized something was wrong, probably sought legal advice, likely called his friends to let them know what was about to happen, and surely took steps to protect himself financially because, believe me, she's coming after everything. As I always say, on the day of the wedding, She's the love of your life, and on the day of the divorce, she's your worst enemy. Am I the only one who thinks this is not normal? The ex-wife never left in my former marriage. When I was married to my ex-husband, I noticed that uh, whenever we went to birthday parties, um, his ex-wife was still around and she would go and I thought, okay, well, maybe, you know, she got invited. So she came. The problem started when um, Thanksgiving came and every Thanksgiving, it just reminds me of it's kind of like a trigger for me. Um, it's water under the bridge now, but I want your opinion on whether this is normal or not. Are you an ex-wife that has remained as part of your ex-husband's family? So on Thanksgiving, she was around. She was in the same table. Christmas dinner, she was in the table. Christmas opening gifts, she was there. Every okay, weddings, you name it, she was around. The other problem <clears throat> I had was that at the time I had given birth to my first daughter and I put on a lot of weight and she would make comments about how much weight I had put on. I voiced my opinion about this to my ex-husband and the entire family, including him, went against me on this one. They said, she's part of the family. She's not just the ex-wife. You have to accept this. Uh, it is what it is. And the entire family went against me on my disagreement that she would be present in all family functions. And finally, 
what this did was that it shut me out. I had, I didn't have a chance to bond with my ex-husband family because it was either team ex or team current wife. And I was at a loss. There was no bending any of those rules for this entire Mexican family. This is what I call a woman with no boundaries. If you break up with someone, you need to give space. It's okay if you have children together and you should have a good relationship for their sake. But the ex-wife shouldn't be invited to everything. That's not right. The man is also at fault. Brothers, one thing is getting along and another is being intrusive. Do you think that woman didn't want to sow hatred towards the new wife and the family? Of course, she would. Some women don't move on with their lives. They want to live ruining the life of their ex-husband. That's why when a man separates, he needs to cut ties. If you have children, only talk about the kids. Brothers, be careful with this so you don't ruin all your relationships in the future. We've reached the end of the video, but before we go, the questions are for you. What's your opinion on this woman being jealous of her ex-husband's new wife? Why do you think men don't want to get married? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your support means the world to us and motivates us to create more content. Stay tuned for the next exciting video from The Wall.